Hey, we are back with another video and this is going to be a quick one about essential oils. So she had another seizure two nights ago on January 3rd, which puts us at 57 days between um, the seizure that she had back in November and now. So we're doing better, but it made us kind of do a little bit of research on essential oils because that was one of the recommendations on like the things that you can do right now um, for your dog with epilepsy. So I thought we'd share our research with you. We're gonna talk about how essential oils work, how to use them, uh, there's two different ways, and then which oils we found to help best with seizures. For those of you that aren't familiar with essential oil therapy, uh, essential oils are derived from plants, whether it be the seed or the flower, and they're pressed, and then you get this very distilled, concentrated oil. So the thing about essential oils is that the molecules and the oils themselves are so, so tiny that they can actually penetrate the blood-brain barrier. So this is a great, almost instant way for you to get the benefits because you can absorb it so quickly. Um, so there's two ways to administer essential oils. The first way is topically, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then the other way is through a water-based diffuser, which is what we use. Well, we do both. Um, so with a water-based diffuser, these are the ones that you've probably seen if you've looked into essential oils, but the diffuser has a has like a well. You add water inside and then you top it off with a couple drops of whatever essential oils you want to use. Um, and then when you turn the thing on, it turns everything into a vapor. And the idea is that you inhale the essential oils. Um, so we thought this was the best way, especially for her and her epilepsy in general, um, is because you want it to go to the brain. So those essential oil molecules that, you know, like fizz up through the diffuser, it looks like a little vapor, um, they travel through the nose and then they affect the brain um, and the brain has receptors for these. And one of these receptor sites is the limbic system. And without going into like anatomy and science, but it's basically connected to the parts of the brain that control heart rate, blood pressure, um, breathing, memory, stress levels, hormone balance. So after I saw that, we weren't really diffusing it um, as often as I should have. Like it was just kind of when I could remember. But since her seizure, I've made sure to set us up so that this can become part of our routine. So I gave our essential oil diffuser a good cleaning. Um, I put it upstairs in our bedroom, right on the floor next to her bed. And I have all the oils handy there. And also I left uh, distilled water up there as well. You don't have to use distilled water. Um, tap water should be just fine. I'm just not crazy about the quality of our tap water in this city, so I feel like I have to clean our essential oil diffuser less um, and descale it less when I use distilled water. So I have that up here too. Um, we our bedroom's on the second floor, so I think part of the reason I was like getting lazy about it is because like oh I have to bring the diffuser downstairs and I have to fill it up with water. So I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible so that I can do this every night before we go to sleep. Um, so going back, so that is the water-based diffuser method, which is a pretty common method. And you can find those diffusers for fairly cheap online. Um, and then the other way is topically, which is basically just putting the essential oil directly on them. Um, so we've been doing that pretty much ever since we found out about her seizures back in September. And she's a pretty big dog. I think she's about 45, 48 pounds. So I get away with just putting the oils on her straight. But if you have a smaller dog or if you're just starting off and you know, you're a little worried about it, you can dilute the oils. Um, and I found that the easiest way to dilute the oils is to take 
an almost solid oil like coconut oil for example um, and just put a little like pea-sized amount in the drop in the palm of your hand add a drop or two um, like you try to control the drops in the essential oil diffuser and they don't always listen uh, but you mix it in the palm of your hand and then where I like to apply the oils are on her ear flaps, like on the inside of her ears. So we'll massage them in there, on both sides. Um, some other people recommend putting them on like the bottom of the pads of their feet, but she does lick her paws a lot. And I mean, essential oils are generally safe, but we're trying to train her. It's a nervous habit that she has where she like licks and chews on her arms and we're trying to train her against that, so I didn't want to add anything there that would encourage it. So whatever you can, just not orally. Um, we haven't seen any advice to administer essential oils orally, so topically on the skin, people have had success just like rubbing it into their fur, and the warmth uh, from their body heat will also help like, like heat the oils so that they're fragrant and so that they kind of penetrate the air as well. Um, I have a lavender room spray that we use like on our bedding and stuff to kind of freshen everything up. And all it is is just distilled water, um, lavender essential oil and witch hazel. So it's completely safe for the dogs as well. Uh, so we do keep essential oil pumping in this house. So going on to which essential oils you should use. Um, we had heard benefits about frankincense and I'll get into that later. But the study that I'm going to pull up is one of the first ones we found during our research. And it's basically about the effects of various essential oils on epilepsy. And I usually just read the abstract of these. These are pretty scientific, like journal style case studies. Um, so they are a little bit hard to understand. Um, in this case, the abstract gave me everything that I needed. So make it easy for you guys too, I've highlighted here in green which ones they say have anti-convulsant anti activities. So they inhibit the convulsions. And those ones highlighted in green, you'll see lemongrass, lavender, clove, dill. And then they name like families of plants. Um, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. It's acerone, carvone, citral, eugenol, Lima Lul. Um, so those are the ones that are good to help seizures. The ones that I've highlighted in red are ones that you should avoid. So sage, lysop, I don't, don't even know what that is. Uh, rosemary, which a lot of you know is used as a preservative in dry dog food. So a lot of you EpiPet owners know to look for this ingredient and make sure that you're not giving it to your dog. Um, camphor, something else I can't pronounce, eucalyptus. So you'll see there, those are the ones to avoid. Red is bad, green is good. So going back to those plant species names that I can barely pronounce, um, I did a little bit of research and I tried to find common essential oils that belong to that plant family group. I couldn't find much on that first um, plant family, genus, species, whatever on there, uh, as acerone. Uh, but I was able to find that the family carvone, that, that the common ones are caraway, um, spearmint, and dill. Um, as far as the citral family, you'll see basil, sweet basil, lemongrass, uh, lemon, and clary sage. And I know that sage was like on the red list of ones to avoid, but clary sage is actually different from like regular sage. So just keep that in mind if you do decide to go with that oil, look for clary sage. Uh, the eugenol family is cloves, wormwood, uh, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And then the linalool family, clary sage is in there again. I, I'm not a botanist. I don't know why it appears in two families of plants, but whatever. Uh, bergamot, probably pronouncing that wrong, rosewood, lavender, and patchouli. So of this list, the ones that are in blue, um, I've provided their scientific names, 
because during our research, we came across another study. They basically studied those specific essential oils in an isolated environment and reported on its effects. So um, I will be linking both these studies below, um, but I wanted to provide the scientific names for you so that you can see on the table that that study provides if you're interested um, and kind of match them because let's figure like no one knows the scientific names. So I spent all the time Googling. I figured I'd share it with you guys as well. Um, so again, at this point, a lot of you are wondering, well, which essential oils do I use and where do I begin? And echoing back to the video that we made about our kind of game plan to fight Raven's cancer are to buy one supplement, just one. So cancer treatment is expensive enough as it is, no matter which route you decide to go and going and buying an arsenal of supplements is one great way to waste money. So that's what we did. Um, we just went and bought everything that was recommended to us and we didn't know what was working because we were giving her so many things at once and I wish we would have done it differently. Luckily for us, we have a lot of these essential oils um, on hand. Like I said, we've, we've always used essential oils um, over like home fragrances and candles and plug-ins and things like that. Uh, you'll see that a lot of the oils here are actually the same brand because I was gifted these oils, so those were handy. We had the frankincense from when we were treating Raven. And um, I, after we found out about her seizures, I used the frankincense right away, knowing that I had it on hand. And for this video, I did a, a little bit of research on the benefits of frankincense for seizures. Um, in the past, when I've used it, it was always like the benefits of frankincense for cancer, but for seizures, Again, it helps the limbic portions of the brain. So that's like memory, emotion, um, and it can lessen the severity of a seizure if you're able to um, administer frankincense while the seizure is happening. Excuse me, sit down, sit down. So um, again, we have it handy and that's just happened happens to be like why I'm using it. I don't want to waste it. Um, but for those of you that don't have any essential oils and you're wondering which products to buy, um, I was also looking because um, we've got about maybe a third of the frankincense bottle left. So I'm wondering what we should use next. Um, I found two products. One is a product by Animal EO, um, which has a lot of good reviews. I'm part of a couple canine epilepsy Facebook groups and I've been scouring message boards and kind of reading through the reviews here. And if you look at the ingredients, you'll see a lot of familiar ones to the essential oils that were cited in the two case studies. Um, so I trust this blend. It looks like it has pretty much everything that was listed in those studies. Some that I haven't heard of before. It is a little on the pricey side, um, but it is meant for your diffuser. So I feel like, you know, a small, I think these were 15 milliliter bottles will last you a while because you're really only putting like two to three drops. You can even start with less if you have like a smaller dog or if you're new to essential oils, um, cause you have to remember their noses are so much more sensitive than ours. So if you can't smell it, it's still being diffused into the air. So keep that in mind. Um, the second product that we have looked at is pet relief um we saw this one on chewy it's a lot more moderately priced than the animal eo but it comes in a spray bottle form so reading the reviews it seems like people just like spritz it on their pets kind of rub it into their fur if i decide to purchase that one i'd probably do like the ear thing again so that i know it's being absorbed um and if you look at it doesn't have as many ingredients as the animal eo but the essential oils that are on there have come up in the um, two case studies as helpful for seizures. Um, so for our specific case, again, using the oils that we had on hand, last night we diffused 
frankincense, lavender, and lemongrass, because um, that's what we have handy. And then when these run out, you know, I'll look into buying another uh, product, maybe specifically for her, or I just love essential oils in general. Um, and one of my 2020, like my personal 2020 resolutions are to go a little towards zero waste. So we're gonna be looking into making um, a lot of products around the house, like laundry detergent and like beauty products and things like that. So I might just invest in another like random pack of essential oils. But um, that's basically everything that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, we did a little research. We figured we'd share it with you since we mentioned the use of essential oils in our last video. This one was a little more in-depth look at, well, which essential oils do I use and why? Um, so the studies will be linked below for you data nerds like me who have to see it from a legit source and not just some like magazine news article, Buzzfeed kind of thing. Uh, so hopefully those studies help. And um, yeah, leave us in the comments. Uh, how it's working out for you, which ones you decide to go with. And if you guys find like, I know I listed these two, but if you guys find any other blends, again, we're kind of gonna be on the market soon once ours run out. So we'd love to hear suggestions from you guys as well. All right, talk soon.